I'm admitting everyone now. A very good evening, parents. A warm welcome to each one of you present here. Uh, you know, parents with children on the campus for nearly 20 days, the school has been buzzing with laughter and excitement, uh, starting afresh with the beginning of the new academic year 22-23. And in a continuum of our series of efforts to ensure a safe and a healthy school environment for our children, the leadership, teachers, and the administrative staff have worked behind the scenes to outline the SOPs and, and the guidelines, keeping in mind the new normal now. You know, I, you know, I'm sure you will agree that, you know, we have spoken a lot on COVID, the COVID protocols, but you would also agree that we have learned a lot from the past and how to prepare ourselves for the future. So here we are today to discuss and share with you the protocols, our journey, the safe space, vaccinations, impact on children, and so on. So the entire design of the session is curated, keeping in mind the questions shared by our parents. So I think without further ado, let me introduce you to our panelists. We have with us Dr. Manisha Mahindirata, and who is a pulmonologist and has an experience of over 15 years in this field. She practices at the Sarvadeya Hospital in Sector 8, Faridabad. She completed MBBS from Government Medical College and Rajendra Hospital, Punjab University, Patiala in 2003. She also holds an MD degree in tuberculosis and chest disease from Baba Farid University of Health Sciences in 2008. Uh, she also holds professional memberships in societies like the Indian Chest Society, the European Respiratory Society, and she's a proud mother of two children, Devkaran Sidhu and Udayavir Sidhu, studying in grade nine and seven, respectively. And our second panelist, Ms. Arti Dawit, she is the Chief Operating Officer and Director of People and Culture at Shivnada School, a passionate professional with over 20 years of experience. Ms. Darwin joined the HCL Technologies as an HR professional in 2007 and the Shivnada School in 2011. Uh, the strong employee value proposition developed by Ms. Arti and her team led to Shivnada School being recognized as a great place to work. And our third panelist for the evening is our dear Anjuma. So Ms. Anjumam is the founding principal of Shivnada School Faridabad, who is an educator of close to 30 years of experience, a passionate teacher. She started her career in study hall school Lucknow, where she spent 10 years as a founding teacher, touching a wide spectrum of age groups from five years of, you know, five years of age to 18 years old. She has been in the leadership for over 15 years, and her last assignment was with the Jaipuria group of schools in the Lucknow city. So now I would request Anju ma'am to share her thoughts in terms of how the entire journey has been since 2020. So over to you ma'am. So good evening parents. Uh, we are almost into the first month of the new session and there is a definite vibrancy and quite the unbridled joy on the campus. We have uh, not just sustained teaching and learning in the last two years, as you are aware, and have been our partners. I think we have not, as I said, not just sustained, we have thrived and set standards of new age pedagogy in all the strands of our curriculum, be it arts, sports, academics, counseling, teach and special needs, and more such. The more important thing here is that we, we believe we have kept robust and strong connections with our parent body and vice versa and with the children. 
So what else have we done whilst we were like you battling with the pandemic? We have trained, trained and trained ourselves. We have trained ourselves in multiple facets and in unthinkable areas, which we weren't actually trained as educators to do. Uh, so nobody is ever trained to deal with uh, this kind of you know, pandemic, which touches human history. We've also trained ourselves in digital pedagogies, as you are aware, and you have seen plenty of evidences and experienced that directly. Preparation to resume school has been long and deep. Since this webinar is focused on safety in COVID times, resumption of physical spaces, uh, live experiences in classes, and the complete opening up of only offline school. So our attention today is what has been the run up and what are the processes in place which mitigate the risk. No risk can ever be taken away. So that preparation, as I mentioned, has been long and deep and emerged out of multiple discussions and collaborations. And um, Aarti will detail a lot about collaboration, especially with health specialists, not just nationally, but also internationally, and researching what are the best times when schools should be open and looking at various ways to upend the safety norms continually in the school so that the children and us too as teachers, the support staff, our bus uh, drivers and everyone, all humans are safe in the school. On that note, I will pass it on to Bhagi Lakshmi and uh, she will invite the other panelists and then we'll take your questions. So Ms. Aarti, I, you know, I give it to you now and then, you know, you could share with our parents the journey, how it has been since 2020, how the protocols have changed, whom we've collaborated with. So if you could throw some light on that. Sure. Thank you so much and uh, a very warm welcome and good evening to everybody. It's, uh, I think it's my first opportunity to interact uh, with the Faridabad community and uh, there is a lot uh, which has happened uh, since the 2020 and uh, our journey uh, through the pandemic uh, has been immense test of our strength both as individuals and as organization and uh, as a community we did draw uh, strength you know from and often fallen back on each other and uh, you know beat our parents students teachers uh, this was a situation that nobody had anticipated and you know everybody was trying their best to cope with it. And as a school, we felt responsible, uh, not just for our students and their families, but also for our teachers, our support staff, their families. And through the many waves uh, which uh, our country has seen, there were certain uh, proactive measures uh, as a school community across our campuses, which we went ahead and took, uh, wherein um, school organized, uh, something called an emergency response teams at the beginning of the pandemic across the campuses, which had our head of departments, principals, admin heads, uh, our people and culture teams immersed in it. And, you know, the ERTs were our eyes and ears across campuses. They kept track of the latest COVID protocols, courses, treatments, and they just went all out to support the entire Shivnada school community across the campuses from you know, doctor consultations to ambulances to hospitalization arrangements. And, and during the waves, we had over 1000 members of staffs in our community who tested positive and received comprehensive support from the ERT across the campuses. So that's something which as a community, uh, I feel that we were able to look at. Uh, we also benefited from a global COVID-19 helpline, which was created by HCL Healthcare. It had the doctors, mental health counselors, and it was available to the entire Shivnada school community 24 by seven. They were also our first point of contact related to COVID and the concerns. And it was something which I felt at that point in time was very helpful. And uh, the second wave brought in, uh, you know, brought more loss uh, and was a true test of the policies and capacities which we built in the round one. 
and looking at the sns community which has everybody how donations poured in whether it was uh, you know teachers or our parents or students uh, doing doing campaigns across the three campuses and they weathered the storm and contributed close to 1.2 crore uh, towards the covid relief fund uh, or efforts which were contributed across the schools the teachers contributed uh, salaries for our support staff families uh, there was a 45 day long community kitchen and ration distribution which happened across our campuses which is uh, you know in order to ensure that uh, you know uh, there is some support uh, our uh, neighborhood children uh, were given devices lots of new uh, laptops were bought our uh, you know families and friends donated uh, so that you know that there is continuity of learning and there were many vaccination drives at that time for our uh, Uh, teachers and their family members which we were able to uh, do for over 700 employees so those were some of the uh, initiatives i would say the school community took on during various waves and in all it has been a turbulent journey and you know battling against an invis- invincible enemy uh, and and uh, we have a renewed sense of gratitude appreciation uh, here and now and the community we share uh, with our teachers students and all the parents so over to you bhagya yes i think our the all our parents will definitely agree that the second wave was much deadlier and all of us had our own share of grief and um, i think it's by all of us just working together is something that we were able to sail through it so i think i'm moving on you know to dr manisha you know i'm sure our parents are waiting to hear from you in terms of the doctor's perspective that what is it exactly the current situation what is it uh, good evening all and welcome to the uh, discussion on the covid safety protocols so uh, as a pulmonologist uh, people hardly knew any pulmonologist before the covid which did so uh, we definitely saw lots and lots of loss of life but to begin with initially even we had no options we had no drugs we had no experience in medical science we haven't ever studied about such virus i still remember there is such there is a mention about such virus in our medicine book which we never ever uh, thought ki we would have to face it the uh, names probably merge up as the virus uh, evolve but we haven't given any importance during the entire medical science viral infections are not given any importance this covid has been deadly and at the beginning we had no exposure no knowledge only fear but we had no other option than to stay initially since uh, the first wave was milder the second got worst uh, eventually we also came to know about few drugs which were almost all the drugs were under trial and eventually at the end of the waves or after one month of trial of a new drug or some 40 45 days of trial of the drug we used to get a publication ki even this drug won't work so what have been doing with those drugs how patients were cured how they were improving and why the patients did not improve or why we lost few healthy patients was always a query for all of us so because none of the doctors knew anything we used to have protocols evaluation after every ninth day because 9 to 10 day was sufficient enough ki 10 days ka course kaisa raha hai and how did the patient respond to a new drug the hospital community all the pulmonologists and covid people used to sit together and say our experience with this drug was okay so let's put it to next level of the patients and this is how we have evolved it would it was difficult and most uh, for the parents and the elderly because elderly is are most of the time immunocompromised uh kids have always been the center because uh, we had no drugs and drugs under trial could not have been used on kids we could not have put them under trials not take risk for them with the new medications so uh, with god's grace uh, with time we came to know that their innate immunity or the immunity which uh, kids uh, achieve during birth or which is genetically transferable is 
sufficient enough to save them from the severe form of the disease but since but as the community transmission occurs the number increases then even 1% of the denominator is also high and to lose young life is actually disheartening at the end of the day we had some gratification with life saved but we could not afford to lose any lives so new course of time we have come up with new drugs and the vaccination has been a blessing so today everybody can see as we have got so called a third wave or the fourth wave the severity has come down to negligible people uh, rather there are some drawbacks also people have become over confident or i would say ignorant about the disease and this is how the third way led to the community transmission so today we are here what we can do from the uh, physician point of view as a parent as a school and i am here to handle all your queries regarding the medical point of view on covid thank you so much for the you know for that dr manisha and in true sense all the medical fraternity are true covid warriors there you know i'm sure you have worked tirelessly your team has worked tirelessly for you know for the entire nation to you know to pass the first wave the second wave the third wave or the fourth and as many as it will come so now my question would be you know to you know to arthi and a parent you know wants to know that could you shed some light on the steps and protocols that are being followed at the school currently so uh, there there have been many communication which has gone out uh, from the principal's desk uh, before we started on 4th of april and uh, at school uh, we have been steadfast in our uh, resolve to ensure that uh, why we prime our students on an optimum learning experience student safety has always uh, remain at the forefront of all our efforts uh, within the campus and we've taken various such initiatives which have been timely been communicated uh, to parents where we, we are currently looking at uh, random testing of 50 members of the school community the third party our teachers three times a week uh, we've gone ahead and budgeted uh, and procured uh, the best available uh, rapid antigen test kits uh, pan bio from abbott uh in the market to ensure uh, maximum accuracy of results as well as prevention and early detection of cases uh, should any revive uh, arise and we we went ahead and also revised uh, and looked at a comprehensive uh, covid protocol uh, uh, uh that's been followed across the three campuses uh, we also constituted uh, a covid response and prevention force which is led by public health professionals uh, our parents uh, members of the parent partnership group and uh, we're looking at uh, them meeting biweekly you know to review advice on key decisions uh, related to covid on uh, cases on campus and like we have dr manisha uh, actively involved with us in in many such discussions and cases where we want to take her consult so these are few of the cases when uh, areas we looked at uh, when children came back full time on the 4th of april wonderful arti you know and ma'am now my next question is to anju ma'am and it's a very interesting question ma'am because uh, the parent has written that a lot has been spoken on the impact of online learning on children you know or hybrid learning on children so ma'am what do you see an impact on the children in the physical space after they've returned for nearly 24 months of online learning so over to you ma'am my observation is not mine alone my observation comes from multiple collaborations and conversations with the teacher in the class because they have the direct experience right so as uh, dr manisha just detailed that every ninth day they used to meet and this was very interesting for us to learn in schools too i think we meet three or four times a week and sometimes every day to very closely look at the changes which may not be visible and the changes which are um, not so obvious and to pick up signals and cues and look at the learning gaps which we would like to address now this is not something we are looking at after only 24 months as most of you may remember 
uh, last winter, the children came back. This was a golden period before Omicron. They came back for two, two and a half months. We shut it. Then they came back on 14th of February. So even last year, the gaps became visible. So we had a whole, we've done, as I may put it simply, a gap analysis of every grade, of every domain, which means subject, also in the art space, in the sports space, in the counseling space for special needs children. So there has been a journey that Shivnada School across all three campuses, where we about Faridabad particularly, that we have lived and we've looked, honed actually, sharpened our own saws, we've sharpened our own strategies to look at how we can provide acceleration or remediation and change the way we teach, look at lesson plans more closely so that they refer to building blocks of the previous class and look at baselines, dipsticks, previous and prior knowledge so that no child moves into the next class with skills unaddressed or, un, or not incorporated. So that's very serious business in the teaching and learning space at Shirnada School, where certainly truncated timetables cannot be a substitute for an in-person eight to three class, uh, eight to three schedule, which brings in multiple experiences where if you walk through the corridors of the school, there is a lot that learn of learning that happens outside that classroom, which actually were compromised when you are a little bit of a post-it stamp on a screen. And cameras, audio, technical glitches, nonetheless, I think uh, with conviction, we have, the children have moved two sessions with rationalization of critical skills that needed to be built. And the rest, we could look at experiences and activities and building those spaces again when children come back. That's how we thought during the whole pandemic. So yes, there, there, there are things that we are addressing very, very closely, as I also mentioned in the orientations when we met physically. I hope that answers uh, that question. I'm sure, ma'am, you know, a lot of queries to rest when it comes to parents' mind because they had a lot of unrest in their mind in terms of, you know, what exactly is the impact on my child or, you know, the impact on the physical learning. So now shifting gears completely and coming to you, Dr. Manisha, uh, you did speak about the vaccination and, you know, that's happening and even Alpi spoke about it. So there's a parent who wants to know that please share your views on the safety of the upcoming vaccine for kids of grade of six years and above. So throw some, you know, throw some light on that. See, uh, till date, uh, there are only two vaccines which are uh, emergen which have got emergency approval. One is Covarex and the other is Covaxin. Covaxin is for six years and above. The Covarex is for five years and above. The safety profile, uh, the Covaxin has been on thousands of kids and the safety profile is documented. For Covarex, they have uh, taken trial on some 600 kids and followed for some 30 uh, days, and they have found to be 100. That has been found to be 100% safe. But since that number is too less to define a vaccine to be safe and to be uh, applied for public or DCG approval, so that vaccine is still under. Uh, government's approval from India file. Then we don't have any other vaccine which is available in India for uh, kids above six years of age. Right, right. And also, you know, just talking in the same line, you know, a lot of parents raise a concern about the immunity, you know, that after two years, children are back on the campus. So what are the things, you know, that they can do at home to boost the energy of the young children? See, that's a very vague uh, question or uh, a very uh, generalized question to be answered. Medically, there is nothing specific since I've told you that we don't have much medicines to treat COVID or there are no preventive medicines to uh, for COVID. So we have to work on the general immunity of the kid. We, uh, then we have another thing that we have, uh, we have been taught the hygiene hypothesis. I don't know whether how many parents know that. Hygiene hypothesis is like 
if you keep your child away from exposure to dust or allergies or infections or you try to over protect your child he tends to have more infection so hygiene hypothesis says that the child should be exposed to whatever the general public is going through i don't say that the child should be exposed to the covid patients or even the covid suspect but once the child is vaccinated we cannot have keep the child in the house and have that fear of not exposing the child to the covid so they have to generally work on their health uh, this junk food has to be avoided then exercises a proper routine proper sleep pattern and uh, no junk food that's the most important thing all right so thank you so, you know so much for that dr manisha now moving to you arti there's a parent who's asked that uh, tell us a bit about the kind of research that went into putting these protocols in place ah uh, yeah i mean we've read so much we've learned so much from uh, across the world uh, within our city and you know much like the curriculum design and teaching pedagogy policy making for school especially anything that affects our student also involves comprehensive planning and research and uh, we did uh, went ahead and study international school closure data on unesco website it's very easily available any parent can log in and look at uh, many articles which has come in in the last two years and we've come across uh, some very intriguing in stats so countries uh, like the uk uh, have had schools open from quarter 3 of 2020 with closure due to covid being only once between the quarter 4 of 2020 and quarter 1 of 2021 and when we look at uh, the stats from us the data shows that the schools were never completely uh, shut down and remained partially operational throughout the pandemic similarly japan had shut schools down due to covid only in the quarter 1 of 2020 and post which the school remained fully open throughout and uh, a recent uh, unicef uh, press report mentions that school closures have created a lot of uh, crisis for children on um, in her opening remarks talked about it you know causing them to experience uh, lots of social isolation increased anxiety and you know apart from the loss of significant interpersonal and fine motor skills there is so much uh, our kids have lost by being at home and as anjuman was sharing they will catch up on their curriculum their math their sciences their english but it's their social skills which which needs uh, uh, you know coming back and being back at school is important and uh, uh, one of the reports also mentions that schools uh, are not the main uh, drivers of transmission and that it is possible to keep them open for in person learning so our covid protocols have been drafted uh, after very carefully studying uh, the cdc guidelines the covid-19 guidelines for children under uh, 18 years as stated by our ministry of health and family welfare uh, from government of india and lots of modifications of the same by education ministry of india so we've been referring we've been partnering with uh, many international schools or our neighboring schools in the city like british school american school and they've kept schools open a lot more than uh, many other schools uh, in the city so it's it's been through all these measures that uh, we've looked at data and looked at policies within our schools great uh so now completely shifting uh, you know the mind of the parents from protocols to going on to a little different perspective and this question is for you ma'am that uh, a parent has written that tempers and poor decision making flare up during times of stress and this has been quite evident during the last two years of pandemic where children have been exposed to a lot of screen time less supervision from the parents due to xyz reasons so as a head of school what are the repercussions or challenges or manifestations are you seeing in students across grades in terms of the behavior all right this is a two pronged answer um one uh, as i said last this uh, last winter february and even now almost as i mentioned closing one month of the new session we've seen various varied kind of behavior patterns one is very very encouraging you know the children have developed a maturity beyond their years 
what they have gone through in this time and uh, their resilience. Resilience doesn't build in good times. It only builds in adversity. I mean, that's the law of life. You can't suddenly be really resilient and courageous if things are going well, everything is provided for. So these children have gone through, like everyone else, through minimalistic, simple lives, helped out in home chores. So there is a maturity, which as, as I mentioned, quite defined their young years. There are thoughts which we were not conversant with online, which they express and share now. They question more. They were always questioning children at Shivnada School, but they question a lot more, not necessarily about the subject they study, but about life. There is a calmness and equanimity in many of them, and they are very, very articulate. On the flip side, there is shyness, children becoming introverts, long periods of isolation, alienation, quite like an existential experience of the child in his laptop and his bedroom. And sometimes not letting even parents come in. So when they are much younger, they would like to have the parents around, but when they grow, hitting adolescence, they would like to be by themselves. So those are also visible. I think in this one month, I have officially received more um, request to ask to let their child be with the counselor than before. So a lot of parents have written in to me that please ask the counselor to you know, take care of my child and allow the counselor to meet him or her. Yet we have also observed aggression. We have observed behavior uh, which leans a lot towards anger, not the ability to coexist with peers anymore. So there has been a breakdown of the social contract of that social relationship. And it will take time for children, for these children who are experiencing it to come out of it. It's not going to happen magically. It will take them time. It will take, it's also impacted the teachers. Teachers are seeing these visible changes in the children. And they first have to control their emotions, have a sense of awareness, self-awareness, and then deal with the children's emotions. Uh, so we don't want to look helpless when children come to us, but the kind nature of aggression is different. The, even simple things like sharing a water bottle or somebody drinks water from your water bottle, or there is an elbow on your table and you're not used to those elbows anymore. The coexistence, we are seeing the rebuilding of that, but that's also a journey. Uh, some children have, need some grief management. They've kept it bottled. They've lost grandparents. They've lost family members. And even if it's not immediate, but they've heard so much that it has contributed to how they have felt, but not perhaps had an outlet to share. And those signs are becoming visible. Yes, a lot of screen time, which has been supervised or unsupervised, but I would like to say the video games children play, you see, you get brownie points if you keep killing people and keep going to the next level. And if that's all that the child has done for recreation and hasn't had outdoor uh, experiences or outings with family, which anyway were all uh, at a lockdown situation. Now, if the child, when the children come back, Sometimes they do take the law in their own hands and think the only way to handle a quarrel is to punch. But you don't get brownie points in the real world for that. You're a lawbreaker for that. So I would like to urge parents that do keep an eye on what the children watch. Our vigilance has scaled and truly our, we are I think we every day feel that did we even have the capacity to look at such behavior changes in a section of the uh, student group? We have no choice but to build that. So uh, yes, there is uh, that kind. And homes, homes need to be nurturing, loving spaces. So we are done with isolation. And I think families can 
come together and we there's there can be more openness and transparency and uh, i'm sure you do it but less of judgment and less of worry about academics it will fall in line all of that let's get the mental well being and emotional resonance first uh, as our focus here absolutely ma'am and i think in the same breath where we talking about counseling a parent is written in the chat that will the school be scheduling any counseling session for parents to learn how to handle that kind of aggression at home yes a coffee a uh, coffee mornings coffee evenings and we will keep optimizing and leveraging technology if you have work to do and if you prefer it online we'll be soon reaching out they've just been calendared and i think we always did parent uh, not counseling but parent conversations on parenting but also on other aspects of being a parent so they are soon going to be resumed absolutely all right so now coming to you dr manisha uh, a parent is asking how much is too much in the beginning you did say that you know you know sometimes we are over cautious sometimes we are laid back attitude and that's the reason why this third wave has come up so the question is that looking at the current scenario whether it's a deadly virus whether it's going to spread not going to spread what are the you know small things that parents at home can do for the children and something that even the children can remember throughout so just throw some light on that see uh, as i told you as uh, our knowledge is evolving regarding the virus and the uh, strain of the virus is mutating and uh, uh, fortunately the strain is getting milder so since the uh, strain is getting milder the symptoms uh, do change and uh, the government guidelines also change so even schools need to revise their protocols regularly just to keep in uh, line with the uh, government protocols and uh, keeping in mind now it has been a stage where uh, enough uh, has been done from the government end from the school end from the medical part of everybody is now aware of how we can prevent it so now it's our responsibility as a parent uh, as a caretaker that we one thing inform make kids aware second uh, we should be responsible enough that if our kids are suffering if even if they start showing mild symptoms or even if anybody in the family since it is highly communicable even uh, presently the transmission is too high although it has been under reported present scenario also so it is more of our responsibility because you will not be tested positive you will not be uh, stamped as a covid positive and you will not be advised for any isolation or quarantine so it is our responsible uh, responsibility and parents responsibility to uh, make aware of kids and other family members as soon as you are symptomatic stay at home uh, only not staying at home you uh, isolate yourself and the uh, uh, schools and the offices or the workplaces should be properly intimated there is no stigma anymore so there is no point hiding the symptoms see if the school is doing rapid test so the rapid test has a very poor sensitivity so taking that false belief of negative test and staying in the community and leading to community transmission Uh, is unethical at this point of time when it is the responsibility of the individual so once you have symptoms you should inform the authorities you should quarantine yourself get yourself tested rapid is nowhere in the guidelines nowadays you should get yourself with an rt pcr and uh, see masking indoors this is another issue uh, topic for discussion masking how will that help at home i think it is practically not possible it is practically not possible you cannot put a tight fitted mask at home and roam about have your food and do your daily activity which is not possible so as soon as you feel that there is any symptom even a symptom of malaise or a body ache during the time of the community transmission should be given importance and patient should be isolated so the guidelines have changed the quarantine period has shortened to 5 days and at the time of the exposure during the if you consider yourself to be exposed on day 0 then at least 5 days you take 
to become uh, non infectious and to positive also so before getting yourself tested before 5 days and getting a negative report does not is not the solution so you should be tested only after day 5 of the symptoms and you should keep yourself isolated all right thank you so much for that dr manisha then in the same breath you know my question is going to be arti you know to arti that um, covid 19 kits have shown a, you know uh, have shown and known to have a low accuracy uh, especially at the early stages and right now dr manisha also stated the same thing so why have we why as a school have we chosen to depend upon the test results as an indicator of covid as opposed to visible symptoms amongst the school community so uh, it's it's a precaution which we're taking and uh, uh, all our guidelines say that if our teachers or uh, students or parents uh, if you're showing symptoms stay at home uh, you know isolate or wait for uh, uh, you know and do if you're symptomatic don't come to work so you know while uh, fighting the pandemic has been a Uh, too long year battle right and all of us have faced several challenges and consequences thus far and the conclusion is that we will at some point in time have to accept that covid is here to stay and you know and uh, it's going to be part of the new normal so the policies uh, uh, has come about after multiple rounds of careful con- consideration as i said you know consultation with healthcare professionals uh, 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 people uh, in our community leadership and other schools uh, what practices they are looking at we've also uh, carefully studied go- global trends and the benefits of a hybrid versus a physical learning model and all decisions which we've taken uh, since the 4th of april has been made keeping the best interest of our students at the forefront right so in our efforts to ensure smooth functioning of the school alongside of the prevailing pandemic or the numbers going higher in our city we have introduced various protocols the sanitizing the measures uh, you know which we look at to keep uh, covid cases at a minimum and that's where school thought that we will invest uh, and procure uh, the best uh, self uh, test kits available in the market and uh, we went through uh, some of the study which came out there was a press release about the abbott uh, and bio self test uh, uh, identifying that it correctly identifies about 95% 95.2% of the positive samples and 100% of the negative samples so the report is published it's out mm-hmm. and that's the reason uh, we made it available across our campuses uh, to ensure uh, anyone who shows slightest of symptoms uh, can test themselves and there is uh, a, a process available at school uh, for early detection so that was the idea behind it thank you so much just for that to, just to add on rt with the testing there are two type of testing which are defined one is screening the other is testing the screening is for asymptomatic just to see whether there is community transmission or uh, there are patients who are asymptomatic and still the carriers yes the rapid test does work for screening because we uh, just need some numbers tested just to see that we are not in a community transmission yeah right? uh since uh, but once the uh, patient has symptoms then rat negative rapid test negative should not be taken as negative then we should go for rt pcr right absolutely yes absolutely yes so thank you so much for that and now moving on to anju ma'am ma'am it's a very interesting question which is coming up that what triggers like what are the triggers for closing a school or moving to hybrid and online and why not give the option of hybrid learning to children now i think triggers are uh, very much part of the sop which was communicated to you on the night of 3rd of april evening of 3rd of april and then very recently 10 days before also uh, of moving into uh, reworking the teaching design and moving into online for a particular section and not for the whole school the 15% which is uh, declared in a particular class which means a section that section gets closed and then tracking of wherever the children have those four or five children have been that is done tracking and testing information has been immediately uh, disseminated even the ones that we have recently detected uh, and the 
all the parents of that section have been informed, but we've not had till date. We haven't reached that situation, and I hope we don't. Uh, if Dr. Manisha says the pandemic and the virus is weakening, then that's a good thing. I hope you said that, I, I, or at least I thought I, you I, said I, that. I did. Mommy. Yes, okay. Uh, so why not online? I don't think you want online, do you? After two years of children being on screen, so detrimental to just their well-being, as I just shared, and you know that too. Uh, one doesn't really have to be a psychologist anymore, but we have looked at, uh, in the same vein, I'll just share, that today every teacher in Shivnada school has the very basic understanding and training of being a counselor. You know, we had response teams. We also had pastoral care teams. And those were teachers who volunteered, got, were given certain elements of counseling by the counselors who would look at more difficult and more the cases which really needed their help as we called it, the psychological first aid. So every teacher is geared up for that. And a hybrid functioning school is not possible with an eight to three, one of the reasons. You don't want your child from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. sitting on a screen. There are children moving out of classes on fields, library, uh, the music, dance, etc. rooms. They are have, having collaborations in open, open learning spaces. They dine and together twice a day. They move into buses. Those are richest experiences that can be, and those can't be replicated in a hybrid mode. The, when a, so there were times when we needed to do it, but you know children were uh, closing school at 12.30 or 1.30. Even today, parents receive something called the synopsis of the week so in case the child is unwell and the child has missed, missed school. As Dr. Manisha also said, child is symptomatic, please keep the child home. And we've gone out and reached out to those parents and actually also given daily updates so that they know that what is happening in the class. If I talk about senior children and that all cascades right into middle school, not into primary, but does cascade into middle school. Very recently received syllabus rationalization by CBSC for grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. When we look at it and analyzed it just two days before, all the chapters which were removed, topics, subtopics which were removed, 30% cut off last two years, we are into 2019 syllabus, 2018 syllabus by CPS. Now you need that many hours to be able to do justice and to unpack it. And therefore middle school gets impacted because that whole trajectory has to be your backward integration. That's one of the reasons also. School has to be experienced. And I think like a cough and a cold and a viral, with all precautions we were taking even before the pandemic, we would keep our child uh, hydrated and we'd keep giving our child nutritious food, waiting for fever to go down and then send the child to school. Let's follow those practices and stay offline completely. Like ma'am, and I can see on the chat also two or three parents have written no online, if it can be just no online. I think everybody just wants to be in the school like we want the children to be on the campus. Uh, so Dr. Manisha, there's a parent who's, uh, you know, who's asking a question. Does wearing a mask for a long time pose any risk for the child? Actually not. Uh, even the guidelines have shown that uh, kids less than two years are not supposed to wear a mask. Children who are compromised, who cannot be left alone to take off mask, or children who have respiratory disorder or breathing issues, only they are not allowed uh, or they are advised not to wear mask. Rest, everyone should wear mask. Putting tightly fixed mask 
will not lead to any complication no dips in oxygen therapies no uh, lung collapses there were there were messages circulated in the whatsapp groups during the mask when we were putting n95 and we were putting tightly fit mask ki lung collapse people have complications no and even if it occurs it would be less than 0.001% so we cannot risk the whole community for that 0.001% so yes proper putting and in case of any difficulty in breathing the child knows how to take off the mask and they should be told to take off the mask only at the open places great all right i'm sure that will answer a lot of questions to the parents that they had in their mind uh so anjum ma'am for you now this question is that you know we've spoken a lot on the protocol safe space sanitization you know doing temperature checks doing the antigen test whatever it is so a parent is written keeping everything in mind is the school a space which is safe as safe as your homes yeah. perhaps even more okay look at your school 15 acres hugely ventilated large open and 30 children in a class even with the acs on partially the doors are open so that's one aspect of why it is safe the other is how we orient our support staff so every person on the school in the school campus is oriented doubly vaccinated today we have tools and strategies as dr manisha also mentioned with vaccination that helps us deal with the pandemic as arti ma'am also mentioned that we got to live with this covid it's not running away anyway it may weaken over a period of time so we have those tools we have the knowledge there is deep cleaning done there's an infirmary in the school right there which doesn't exist in our homes what do we do we pop a paracetamol or we will immediately ring up our doctor but here there is an infirmary where there is a trained nurse who can look into the child's symptoms straight away inform parents if that needs to be done random testing i don't know of many schools in ncr or in the country where this is happening with the intensity as it happens in shivnada school for teachers for support staff bhaiya didis drivers and we get a mail and we all comply because that's as it's for community safety even if that antigen uh, is not 100% but it is the first level of uh, protection for sure sops are very much in place orientation as i mentioned and we've learned over the two years together that where is the transmission maximum happen is it from surfaces which we earlier all used to think is hand washing still key to keeping ourselves infection free and hand washing was always key remember you always trick told children that wash your hands before meals before putting them in your mouth etc so i would say with a lot of conviction school is totally safe and many of us have been in school through the pandemic in 2020 also but we feel say a lot more safer now with being vaccinated naturally and all our 12 years most of our children who are 12 years and above are also vaccinated and we hope the 6 years and above also happens so great ma'am and i think in the same breath the parent is also written in the chat box that there are schools which have rt pcr test mandatory every weekend so i think that's on another level you know that's on another tangent itself so and there's a question in the chat box where a parent is written that in case a student is identified as infected does the school follow any measures to check rest of the students for infections as well so if yes then how do they do that so the first thing we do is if we know that a child is positive and even if the child is not the family is positive the child is asked to be at home this naturally the child should be in school that section is informed immediately that there was a positive case found in say two covid or any other section and the parents can keep a vigilant eye on their children if they display symptoms please have your children tested just like the doctor here said but and with your consent if we feel that we need to look at 
the first and the third and the fifth day of tracking and testing, we do that, but we always seek your consent too. Information as being no stigma, no taboo, is the first thing that we want it to reach you if some certain things have happened in that class. Great. Uh, so parents, any more questions? If you have, you can raise the silent hand or you can write it in the chat box. Uh, there's a parent who's written, absolutely, ma'am, the way school has been designed that a five-year-old comes back home and says, my school appears to be like an engaging painting. That's a wonderful remark, Mrs. Kurana. Thank you so much for that. And in case you have any more questions, you know, parents, um, okay, there's another parent who's written a question. Can we have sanitizers in class for kids to use after activities with shared toys? I have washing hands is best, but not possible every hour. There are sanitizers in, in a four. I mean, I'm sitting in the school on the first floor and there are sanitizers, uh, two classrooms, outside two classrooms, there's one sanitizer stand and it's always filled. So there are sanitizers in corridors, but not within the classroom. And the children are advised and teachers know that practically if going to the washroom is always not possible. Children are, actually they do it so independently. You know, you know that. So there are enough sanitizers in the school. Yes, yeah, so I think um, in case you have any more questions, parents, you can write in to us and we'll share it with the respective heads. And uh, so, yes, thank you so much for being a part of the session. But I think there's another question. I think we can take one more question. And it is directly for Dr. Manisha. That hello, this question is for Dr. Manisha. Should splash pool classes be encouraged in school when cases are on a rise? Uh, what would you consider as a rise is the criteria. Only when it is a community transmission or even 2-3%. So it always depends on the numerator. So what we consider as a rise is immaterial because in a pool, there is high possibility of transmission with nasal secretions. So if there is high transmission or even if any child even who is negative but has symptoms should not be allowed in the splash pool. And if by chance or by any reason, if the child with the symptoms enters the pool, the pool should be thoroughly clean for the next day. And the kids should be informed and they should observe their symptom for another three days and then only they can rejoin. I hope that answers your question. And, and I think there's one more question which I read on top. So I'll just take that one question. Is it safe to get our six-year-old vaccinated? See, uh, the uh, Covaxin has got approval for the uh, kids above six years of age. Yes, once the vaccines are available for the kids, they should go ahead with the vaccination, both the doses. Great, so once the vaccination is, you know, is out, so parents, you are encouraged to get your children vaccinated on that note. Uh, so yes, we are, you know, we've reached 6.30. We are bang on time today. And so on that note, thank you so much for being a part of the session. I hope it was informative, it was insightful. And in case in future you have any more questions, feel free to write into us. And thank you so much, Dr. Manisha, for being a part of this thank session. You. And, you know, I'm sure it must be a really hectic schedule for you during this time. But thank you so much for taking out time for us. Thank you, Aarti, uh, you know, for just, you know, sharing all that information in terms of what actually goes behind the screen, you know, in making such policies and guidelines for our parents. And of course, thank you, Anjuma. Without you, nothing is possible in the school for us. And thank you, parents, for being a part of this session. Hope to see you soon in the physical space. Thank you. And have a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you. And from all of us, thank all the parents for joining. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you, Aarti. Bye. All right. Bye.